Hello, I'm Johnny Pitts, a writer and photographer who works out of London and Marseille, but is currently isolated in the comfort of my mum's house in Sheffield, where I was born and raised. My favourite two-page spread is from Lars Tumbjork's Office, released in 2002 by Max Strom. I chose to evoke Office not only because it's a masterpiece, but also because it's really hard to get hold of. I elatedly found my copy on the top floor of a semi-deserted 80s department store on the outskirts of Tokyo. So I thought it'd be nice to describe some photos for those who haven't managed to pick up a copy. Office also offers food for thought as we're forced to work from home. The book contains hardly any text, but there's a small inscription in Swedish quoted from Lao Tzu's ancient text Dao Che that I think succinctly sums up Tumbjörk's work. It translates as, Approaching the mystery of life, notice the everyday. To consider the everyday with amazement is wisdom. These photos of officers in Tokyo, London and Stockholm were taken between 1994 and 1999 and seem obviously interesting now. But at the time it was made, this work must have taken real vision and foresight because there was nothing more every day in the late 90s than The Office. This wasn't the 60s mid-century chic of Mad Men, but rather Windows 95 on grey Hewlett Packards, globalisation at its blandest, late capitalism at its most openly corporate. There aren't many double-page spreads in office, but the few included are absolute corkers. I've gone for pages 60 and 61. In photo books, our eyes are usually drawn to the first image on the right of a two-page spread, so I'll start with that one. It's definitely the crowd-pleaser of the two. We're in an office at the top of some anonymous Tokyo skyscraper. A skyline is implied but not seen. Only a gentle blue sky is seen because the camera is being held at waist high, with the corner of the room in the centre of the frame. We see two men standing, unmistakably Japanese despite their backs being turned to us, something to do with their respectful postures and staid haircuts. We know it's the 90s because around the windows walls are panelled in that late 20th century postmodern Japanese way, shiny and metallic though plastic, and the men's suits are baggy and boot cut. The man on the left is younger, wears a light grey suit and holds a brown briefcase behind his back in two hands and stares out at a nearly cloudless blue sky. An older, balding man stands on the right of the younger man in the centre of the frame, facing the corner, the only part of the room that has no window view. Perhaps the older man's eyes are closed or angled to the side looking out at Tokyo, but from our perspective, It appears, curiously, as if he's choosing to stare at the wall. Why is he standing there, looking at some silver plastic in the corner? There isn't a lot more to say. We see a lot of light blue carpet, but sense that there's no furniture in this room, even beyond the frame. This photo works because of its sparseness. Now let's move to the picture on the left page. Here is a mess beneath a brown plywood desk. The brown on this page nicely balanced with the man's briefcase on the right image. The photo is a much tighter view, but the smaller space is packed with way more objects. And the busyness invigorates after the stillness of those two men. Crammed with tatty white file boxes and folders, we see the bottom half of a man wearing shiny grey suit trousers and a white pinstriped shirt. At first, we suspect that this could be the younger man from the image on the right, but the suit texture has a slightly different sheen. His silver jacket is draped over the back of a grey swivel chair on wheels with salmon pink seat padding. Perhaps it's the wheels, maybe it's the draped jacket, but unlike the image on the right, this photograph suggests movement, something frantic, instead of reflective. 
The white files glow with a subtle aqua blue colour reflecting something off camera. And an otherwise monochrome picture is only pierced by a small blue and yellow file in the centre of the image. But it's these little splashes of soft primary colour that make the photo sit so nicely with the baby blue in the picture of the two men. Thanks to this quiet conversation between the colours, we're not jarred by the differences of content and composition, but we're encouraged to appreciate them. One is muscular, the other is minimal. Both are bound by the colours. I suspect that Tumbio captured such odd images for the office book by taking photographs during a period in which a company was relocating. We're probably seeing people move out or move in, which is why everything either seems surreal and chaotic or eerily deserted. But this particular pairing of photographs is encoded with what the Japanese called the Lost Decade. The 1990s marked by economic stagnation after the miracle of the bubble economy was popped. A financial disaster Japan still hasn't truly recovered from. The photo on the left is post-bubble Japan, flapping and unglamorous. On the right, a pensive Japan. Both images indicating that the party of the 1980s was definitely over. <laughs>